just to uh, just to answer one of Ali McCoy's questions about the biggest school, Holyrood in Govan Hill, Glasgow. Okay, yeah. Tom's just texted me and says at one stage it was the biggest school in Europe. Oh really? Mm. That's why you got so many friends from school. Gabby, we had about forty odd in the class. That's normal, mate. No, it's not. It is. No, it's not. We had forty five. Oh, away no, we're you joking. go. We're, big school, you? yeah. Very big. Very big. big. Took in all big, a big, big part of Glasgow. Well, you had them um, that band, didn't you? When she was no, not just that band. Someone here said uh, it was the biggest school and uh, had uh, produced some of Glasgow's most famous sons: Jim Kerr, and Paul Mines, Charlie Burcho, Frankie Boyle, the comedian. Oh, so I'm sure Fran Healy went there from, uh, and then the boys from Texas went there. And they'll, be sa- they'll be saying that about you. Alan Brazil oh, went I there. I don't think so. They will, mate. I don't think so. Cam. They will. Uh, right, it's and now Jack. <laughs> uh, Jack Grill has been full of praise for England's interim manager Lee Carr's led at tomorrow's Nations League match against the Greeks tomorrow. Uh, speaking to Talk Sports Faker others, Jack spoke about how much he was enjoying his football under Carsley. I'm happy to honestly play wherever I love playing for England and um, and I love playing for this manager at the moment and you know when when you have a manager like that 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 you have a real connection with you know you want to give him your all and you know I think I did last month and yeah hopefully I can uh, do the same again. Where does that connection come from? Does it come from what happened in the summer to you and, and not making the Euros and Lee Carsley saying you're still part of this team, we want you back here. Is it a confidence boost or just that you get on so well? What is it? I think a bit of both, really. I think I've always played my best football, you know, when I feel loved off a manager. You know, like Pep does that, but then also when I was at Aston Villa, I had, you know, Tim Sherwood at the start, who I had a great connection with. I had Dean Smith, obviously, which everyone knows, you know, I've probably played... You know, one of my best bits of football ever under him, which obviously, you know, got me in my move to City. Um, and even even Steve Bruce, you know, I played really good football as well under him in the championship. So um, I don't know where it does come from. I think sometimes you just have this connection with a manager. And yeah, I feel like I have got that with Lee. Um, I don't know if it's because we're both from Birmingham. I don't know. All right, Cap. New Oates. Uh, yeah, they well look. It's still, you know, Jack still got the problem of getting a regular game for England, hasn't he? Where you look at that midfield gap. Well, what I would say is that he's done himself no harm in how he performed in the last two games, especially the Ireland game. I thought he was fantastic. Took his goal well. He was driving with the ball from that number ten position, and there's a reason why Lee Carsley brought brought him back into yeah. the squad. You know, he rates him highly, and I'm sure he'll feature. A lot in these two games as well. It'd be interesting if Lee has a, you know, if he has a couple of big results, and there's no reason why he can't with these two games. I don't think I, I don't think they're going to give him the job, Alan. Until why? I don't think they'll give it him until he proves himself the against World Cup better, qualifiers. yeah, better opposition. Because no offense to Finland, um, Republic of Ireland, and Greece, you know, England should be beating them teams anywhere. No matter who's the manager. Did Greece not win a European Championship a few years ago? Well, a few? How, how? Isn't a few three years? It was a few years ago, yeah. Uh, yeah, but what's, what's a few? Isn't a few like three? Was it 80s? When did, when did Greece win? No, it was win 2004, the... was it, or something was like that? It? It was well, well, when was the last time England won it? Yeah, but that's not a few, is it? 20 <laughs> odd years ago. Now, what is going on up in Manchester? 8.38, let's find out. Breaking news, Man City are claiming a win in their bitter legal battle with the Premier League. They genuinely, obviously, believe they're in the right in this case. And I know it's not related, as you mentioned, Jeff, but, you know, also the 115 charges or however many it is. They believe they're innocent, of course. I don't even know why all the other teams in the last few years have played against Man City because all of those games could be written off. I'm going to defend my club because I trust since the owner, since the especially the chairman for the relation and CEOs and all the people working here. And of course, I'm part of this club. This just in, we understand Man United bosses are meeting to discuss the future of manager Eric Ten Hag. He's probably on his seventh cat life, in my opinion, in managing Man United. Is he going to get Man United where they want to go? I doubt it. So what is the point? But the thing is, have they got a suitable replacement? We made the decision, ownership, leadership, staff, players, they're all together. And we are in this process and we keep improving this process and we are convinced we will be successful in the end of this. Uh, coming up 20 minutes to nine. Uh, look, uh, 
<laughs> with the greatest respect, he's gone on holiday ten hag. Yeah, it's a monthly meeting. They do, they do it every month in Mayfair. I think it's Mayfair near Langans up somewhere there. They've got PLC offices. So how do we know they were talking about him? You know. Maybe it came up on the agenda, but maybe it wasn't. Um, you know, are we keeping them? Are we getting? I rid? think. I think, Carl, they'll be making plans and see how the next three games go. The next games before the next international break next well, month. Well, 14th in the table does not make good no. reading, does it? For more or less, we're joined now by Talk Sports Manchester correspondent Mickey Gray. Mickey, morning, mate. Good morning, Mickey. Uh, Gabby, good morning. morning How are you doing? Uh, we're all good, good. Mickey, where do you want to start? City or United? <laughs> oh, we'll do City, shall we? Because. Uh, I mean, uh, they, they've been victorious, haven't they, in their, their appeal? Uh, I think well, no, everybody not, was according expecting the Prem, that. not according to the Premier League, they haven't. <laughs> no, I think they think that they've been victorious as well. Also, um, uh, it was a bit strange to hear that from the Premier League, but I think the reason they turned around and said that they're victorious is um, they've been helped out by the uh, the lawyers of Man City on certain aspects of the, uh, the laws and the rules moving forward. But um, I think Man City would be happy about that. But... Didn't I, didn't I read, I think, that they're going to now try and uh, sue the, the Premier League as well, which was um, a bit bizarre because if they start doing it, I'm sure uh, the rest of the clubs in the Premier League will probably follow. Yeah. Mickey, should we have a cap? Yeah, the reason why I say this, right, because it's driving me mad. I don't know when we're going to get <laughs> at the bottom of this, but I remember, I don't know how many years ago it was now, but Real Madrid, they were talking about we're going bust. And if I'm not mistaken, I think... Did did the, the the Spanish government not bail them out by buying the training ground off them or something to bail them out? They've always had better treatment in Barcelona and Real Madrid than the rest of the clubs in yeah. in Spain. And I, you look you look 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 at Italy. Look around the world, the big big leagues. Who wins them? The, the, the teams that spend the most money, aren't they? Well, yeah, you're completely right, Alan. I, I believe that uh, the the banks look after Barcelona and Man City. So. Um, it was a bit bizarre to say that they were going to go bust uh, because they, they do get looked after a lot more than all the other clubs in the Spanish league. And they always have done. They get the biggest budget in the Spanish league, which is why I think Atletico Madrid have done really well over the last six to seven years and maybe a little bit longer than that as well. Um, my, my take on it is no, I think the club should be able to go and spend what they want. If they get to a point where these new owners are coming and walking through the door, if I bring Newcastle into the equation, they want to go out and they want to spend the money. As long as that club is safe moving forward, um, I, I don't see the reason why they can't go and spend what they want to spend because we're going to find ourselves in a situation where yep. every single season the same clubs are going to be winning the Premier League Mickey, and we don't want Mickey, that. Mickey, you're spot on as well. Like my club, Villa, you know, we had to get sell Douglas the Wees before we did any business. We're still quite sure, I feel, um, on the wings. We had to sell Diaby. Leon Bailey's the only real right winger. He hasn't got the competition, so his performances are dropped. So you're, you're spot on, mate. It's going to be harder for teams like Newcastle Villa to sustain getting into the top four, isn't it? And yet, and yet with Newcastle Villa, Gab, you see the, what's happening at Villa now, the atmosphere, the punters, the enthusiasm, mm -hmm. the confidence. Newcastle's the same, Mickey, aren't they? Newcastle are up yeah. there competing either winning it or getting a Champions League spot. You you know, it's not just the football. It's the, it's all around St. James's Park, the town centre. Everyone benefits. Yeah. Like Ipswich at the moment, everyone is benefiting. Yeah, 100%. Al. Gabby, again, you, you know, you're spot on. Um, you you do, I suppose, look, it's, it's nice to talk about the sides at the top of the league and, and let them go and spend what they want to spend. I think the hard thing is, and, and maybe something that needs looking at is, the sides that get promoted from the Championship into mm. the Premier League. Um, it seems like they're the three teams that are always fighting relegation, which is understandable. But I'm sure they want to go out and spend as much money as they possibly can to give themselves every chance of staying in the Premier League. Yeah. Because it's like yo-yo teams at the moment. And it's so hard for them, as we're finding out this season. So Manchester United, Mickey, just briefly, uh, they had their monthly meeting. Ten Hag's gone on holiday. Um is, uh, you know, is, is it because there's no one else out there or, or do you honestly think they still believe Ten Hag can turn this around I was thinking of Gareth Southgate now whether he'd be the United fans pick I, I'm not sure but um, you know is it a case of top class at the very top class elite management there's no one there from at the moment is that what's keeping Ten Hag in a job well if you, if you if you listen to his interviews Al I think he uses the word process a lot um, I don't know what that process is at the moment. Um, I know the 
they tried to recruit in the summer. But if you think about the players that they brought in Manchester United, um, Ugarte, Mazraoui, um, they they weren't actually playing week in week out for their for their domestic teams, um, so they haven't brought in the type of players that are maybe going to take Manchester United to that next level. Um, they're recruiting younger players, so I think they're looking at the future. There was a quote came out um, from, I think it was Sir David Bracewood um, a few weeks ago, saying that uh, they're looking at twenty twenty eight to win the Premier League. I don't think these are the type of things that you want to hear from Manchester United. Uh, you know, <laughs> it's the here and now that they want to try and get right. And, and at the minute, we all know that they're not. Um, we're supposed to be improving in the league this season. We haven't seen it. I think the last two games, he was under a little bit of pressure. I think everybody thinks that the Porto result was a bad result, but that's a tough place to go. So mm-hmm. I kind of understand a 3-3 there. But Aston Villa as well was always going to be difficult. Now there's that two-week period before the international break and everybody thinks that's the best time to get rid of a manager. Mm. It would have been brought up in conversation yesterday, but I don't think it was mm. number one topic. Mickey, nice one, pal. Thank bad, Mickey. you, Mickey Thank Gray. You, Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6am on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.